As a cleaning expert, whenever I meet somebody or I'm chatting with them, they will often just casually slide in a cleaning question. And you know what, that's fine because I do the same thing whenever I'm among someone who really knows what they're talking about. And frankly, I don't mind. I've spent a long time figuring out answers to the world's cleaning questions, so why not? And in this video, we are going to kick up a series that we are calling hashtag ask Melissa. We've been doing hashtag ask Melissa on again, off again for a long time, but we have decided to officially put a ring on it. We're going to make ask Melissa a thing so that you guys can ask the cleaning, the burning cleaning questions that you have. So if you had a chance to meet me, what would that question be? Well, we asked on Instagram a while back, a lot of you responded. I'm going to answer some of those questions today. And of course, whatever your hashtag ask Melissa question is, feel free to drop it in the comments below. Just remember to use that hashtag. And by the way, it'll work on any form of social media. So if you just put hashtag ask Melissa, we will be able to find it and hopefully answer your cleaning question. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, remember to hit that notification bell so you always know when a Clean My Space video comes out. And give this video a thumbs up if the size of that plant impresses you. No steroids. All the questions are here on my phone. I'm gonna try my best to read your names, but don't blame me if I make a mistake. This one is from Charity Joy Wilt. What motivational music do you listen to that gets you pumped to clean? I am such a nerd that I actually <laughs> I listen to podcasts when I clean. Uh, I don't listen to music when I clean. I just I actually find podcasts more interesting. It gives my brain something else to focus on. It's generally long. I can, you know, go off to another place mentally while just going on autopilot and cleaning. M Kerrig underscore says, how do you keep a balance with a baby, a husband, work, cleaning, and life. And then the emoji that looks like this. I think that's the eye roll emoji. Um, it's not easy and I don't always strike that balance well. It's just a constant juggling act and I am asking myself continually, what do I need to prioritize right now? As a mom, my daughter, as a wife, my husband, those are the two things that I have to put first. Work obviously is very important. Cleaning has moved down the rung and that's why I just try to find little areas where I can squeeze in some cleaning time and I've also lowered my expectations in the interim because I have limited amounts of time, I have lots of work to do and I have a family that I need to be uh, present for. So family to me is most important. Um, and that's where I'm choosing to spend the majority of my time these days. Sean underscore Trego says, was there any stain you just couldn't get out? Of course. Uh, it's typically either an orange stain or a tomato sauce stain. And generally speaking, it comes from Riley. Patty9713 says, how do you keep a home clean when your mother and brother don't pick up after themselves? Well, that is a challenge. There's no question about it. We have a video and I'll link it down below for you. I think it's called how to get your partner or how to get your spouse to clean. We also cover how to get family members or roommates to clean uh, and starting that conversation. Honest to goodness, it's challenging because you can't change the way other people are. Frankly, what you have to do is readjust your expectations uh, about the space that you live in and how much work you're willing to do versus how much work other people are willing to do or don't do. But the spaces that you have direct control over, for example, your bedroom, that is what you can take care of and that is what you can focus on. You can also lead by example. But again, you don't want to clean to the point where you're resenting them. So I would suggest that you watch that video. Rosa Keo says, how to make your clothes smell great without any nasty chemicals or softeners? Well, here's the thing. I use unscented everything and I'm actually okay with my clothes not smelling like anything, but we do have some fabric refresher spray recipes and I will link that for you down below. You can check that out and whip that up and spray it on your clothes and they'll smell lovely. Pastry Chef Daniel says, how often should I deep clean each room in a month? Or can I get by with express cleaning so much that I don't need to deep clean? So express cleaning and deep cleaning, those are two concepts that I cover in my book. Uh, which again is linked down below. Express cleaning is kind of like the fast surfacey type cleans. The deep cleans are, you know, the real detailed jobs. I would say this, listen, you know your house best. 
If there's an area that you can sort of express clean and it looks great most of the time, you're probably doing well. The areas where you want to deep clean, that would be like pulling your sofa and cleaning underneath it, removing the cushions, cleaning underneath those, giving your baseboards a really deep clean, cleaning vents, all of those little areas where when you walk into someone's home who is meticulous, all of those things are done, that's what you would be doing during a deep clean. So I would say, you know, in my house, doing a deep clean once a month is ideal. Uh, I think you can really eke by every two to three months, but you will definitely feel it. But your regular cleans should be every two weeks, uh, and your express cleans are things that should happen weekly. Another one I can't pronounce, J-H-G-R-E-1. If you weren't in the cleaning business, what would your entrepreneurial business be? Uh, that is a great question. I would like to tell you it would either be in jewelry, design or dealing, jewelry, a jewelry dealer or designer, uh, or something to do with perfumes or wines. Lori Wan 3 says, how do you get glass shower doors clean? Hard water film. So glad you asked. We just released a video about this. I'm gonna link it for you down below. But for the record, that is one of the most popular questions we get asked. And Slats 11 says, how do I get grease off my wood kitchen cabinets? So um, it really depends on if your cabinets are actual wood or if it is a wood veneer, but I'm just gonna answer your question as is. First and foremost, make sure that you understand the material that your cabinets are and the way that it's finished so that you can use the appropriate product. Trusting that you've tested in an area and you notice that nothing is getting ruined. What I would suggest for something like this is to use an enzyme-based cleaner. Grease melts with enzyme-based cleaners, essentially. So what you have to do is you have to use a highly concentrated cleaner, something again like BioClean Backout would be a great option for something like this. Mix up your solution, spray it on the surface, let it sit for several minutes, that's how the enzyme cleaner works. It needs time to dwell, to eat all of that grease. And then you can take a sponge or a dampened cloth and start to wipe it away. You might have to repeat this a couple of times, but you will notice more often than not that that gets rid of the grease. Yo, Ander the Sen says, where can I order the microfiber cloths that you are using every time you do cleaning? And you guys, I swear this wasn't a planted question. We do get asked this a lot. Um, you can order them at makersclean.com. That is my last name with an S and clean.com. And they are there. S Brez NY Simpson. If you have an expected company that's going to be stopping by and you have 20 minutes, what would be the best things to do to make the house look and smell good? Um, so if you don't have an essential oils diffuser, you can get one, but if you don't have one, take some essential oils, dash them onto a tissue and leave them in little corners of your home, uh, like hide them. But the tissue, it, it, it just absorbs the essential oils and puts it out into the world. It makes them smell great. So sometimes I do that in the bathroom, like I'll take a tissue, put five drops of geranium essential oil, kind of tuck it away somewhere and the bathroom just smells fabulous. Another really cool thing that we did uh, and I actually have a video about this, I'll link it for you down below, is we show you how to put essential oils in your toilet paper roll to make the bathroom smell really great. So that's a fun thing to do. I would say just make sure that your bathroom looks clean and tidy, change out hand towels, make sure there's fresh toilet paper there, clean up any like obvious yuckiness in there. Floors are a really good area to focus, clutter, try to take all extra clutter that's hanging around, put it away really quick or stick it all in a room and promise yourself you'll deal with it later. And the same thing goes for kitchen. If there's a lot of stuff going on in the kitchen, you can invest a good amount of time making sure that kitchen, you know, the dishes are put away um, and the garbage is emptied. That's another one. Garbage is really smelly. This one comes from Mimimosa. And she says, any advice on making cleaning easier for a teenage girl who hates it and has heaps of stuff all around, please SOS. Yes, because I was that teenage girl. I'm also that adult girl. Um, I really hate cleaning and I struggle with it. So you say here that you have heaps of stuff all around. So a couple things I want you to know. First of all, declutter. Get rid of as much clutter as you can in your room. If I were a teenage girl still and someone told me to declutter, I'd be annoyed, but then maybe I would do it. 
especially if I thought it was my own idea. And then once I started to move away from things and not bring things into my home that I didn't, or in my room, I should say, that I didn't need anymore, you would just see that your room would start to be a more peaceful and serene space that you would really enjoy spending time in. The two things that I struggled with the most as a teenager was clothing on the floor and making my bed. Those two things were never done. Making your bed is really optional. You know, if you feel like you want your room to look a little bit nicer, it's a great way to pep your space up. But just putting your clothes away, whether it's dirty laundry or folding or hanging up, makes all the difference. So if you need a place to start, my friend, that's where you can. McMahon51510 says, what is your most super powered bathtub cleaner? We moved into our house four years ago and our bathtub floor was dirty from day one. As much as I clean it, it just doesn't ever really look clean. Yes, we have tons of DIY recipes. I will link them down below for you. If you want something store-bought, I would say like a barkeeper's friend or, um, Bon Ami, that's the other one that I think would be great. And if you wanna make your own, something like dish soap baking soda would be an amazing combination that would really help scrub out whatever dirt is probably lurking on that floor. Audrey Huggins asks, what is your favorite time of day to clean? I realize any time as long as the cleaning gets done, but do you have a favorite time? No. Uh, I'm generally uninspired when it comes to cleaning, so it's not like, I wake up in the morning and get a surge of excitement or motivation to clean. Um, what the, the time that I clean is the time when inspiration strikes. So it could be day or night, but if I get a surge of motivation, I don't even question it, I just do it, and I ride the wave for however long it lasts, and then as soon as it's over, I just move on. Pija Minha says, where do I find the will to clean? I'll tell you where you find the will to clean in one of our many cleaning motivation playlists, which I will link for you down below. Chris10BL, what is your favorite room to clean and your least favorite room to clean? I like the bathroom as it just looks so good once it's done and I hate my bedroom as I hate folding clothes. Hmm. It's hard to pick, it's hard to choose favorites when it comes to cleaning. Uh, I think, I think I would have to say my kitchen because like you, I just feel really good when I have a clean kitchen, but it is a lot of work, so there's that. Um, and my least favorite room to clean, um, like just about everything else, I don't know. Bathrooms I find really, I find just to be the most labor intensive, but then vacuuming is really labor intensive, dusting, declutter, like there are just so many um, cleaning tasks that are labor intensive. You know what I really hate cleaning? Basements like unfinished spaces. I don't know. There's so many places to hate cleaning. How do I pick just one? That wasn't too difficult. If you have a cleaning question, make sure that you leave it down below or on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook using the hashtag AskMelissa. We will sift the pages of the internet to find them and film another video just like this one to bring you answers to your most burning cleaning questions. And of course, if you have any right now off the top of your head, throw them in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker Chad is at the Chad Reynolds and the two of us are at Clean My Space. If you like the Clean My Space channel and you wanna support what we're doing, we appreciate it. And the best way that you can do that is just to watch another one of our videos right after this one. And here are a couple that we think you might love. If you wanna learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.